There's a cautionary tale for software engineers and businesses that have APIs that deal with users. We have one for you two years ago. We had to make a hard choice, a very hard decision. It was a split decision. Essentially, we had to figure out whether we wanted to optimize for good onboarding experience for developers leveraging APIs or optimize for a lot of other things, including security and usability of the API uh, once you've uh, implemented it. So a few years ago, we upgraded our SDKs. Now they require unique identifiers for every single SDK instance that you initialize. Before, what we did was we randomly, if there was no user ID set, we would randomly generate a new user ID every time a connection was created to PubNub. That's a lot of user IDs. That's a, just a, a lot of user IDs. And that brought with it an ease of use, like we did it on purpose, right? We did it initially because we wanted it to have, a, you don't want to have to set an ID if you don't ha want to, right? So the idea is the less that you have for initializing. Here's an example, here's a quick example. So we've got our initialization here, and then of course now we've added, uh, user ID has always been there, it's just that now it's mandatory. Earlier we excluded it because that's 33%, that's like a third, right? So if you only have to put in two keys, that's just that much of an easier of an experience to onboard. You don't need to worry about the user ID because one would be generated for you. That brought with it problems. Three, three major problems. One was uh, billing, Pricing based on monthly active users was based on the user ID. And uh, if you, you know, reloaded the app multiple times that generated new user IDs by default in the SDK, and that meant that your bill would increase. Now that's a problem, right? We don't want to do that because there could be some accidents and we don't want to bill for any, you know, fake test data. Another problem is security, right? When you have a user, you want to be able to grant them an access token that only works for that user ID to help prevent things like uh, impersonations. And so for every user ID that you have, you grant them a dedicated token where they only have access to those certain data feeds. And another is being able to track users. So if you have an API or a platform that takes advantage of multi-user environments like PubNub does, then you will want to make sure that you have accurate data for the user information because things like presence detection. Is the user online? Do they have a green dot? How many users are actively participating in a channel and communicating? So all of those reasons, they outweighed the original need to have, you know, a, a better user experience. So now it's mandatory to have a user ID identified every time you initialize the SDK. Now, of course, you can put in a stationary uh, ID here and that'll be fine. You could also generate your own IDs to replicate uh, what it used to be where it was randomly generated. Though you probably don't want to, you probably, you probably want to at least have a stationary ID or um, have real user IDs. I, that's that's the best choice. Use real real user IDs is the best option. And what we decided to do was throw an error if there was no user ID supplied. So that way it sort of enforces uh, sort of requires a user ID being present when you initialize the SDK. And that was our solution. And it actually has worked. So I can see what the outcome is over the year. And now the data looks accurate in our systems. The billing's correct. Uh, security is better and improved. And now you're able to leverage all the API capabilities of the PubNet platform for presence detection and other user-based information. How do you generate a universally unique ID in any language? There's something called a UUID or or GUID, a, a globally unique ID, or a universally unique ID. Wait, aren't those two kind of the same thing? They should be, they should be the same. Oh, they are, okay, so our, our nice little internet AI over, it says GUIDs and UIDs are essentially the same thing. They are, the idea is that you can generate an ID where there won't be another collision. There won't, if you generate this ID, you should never run into the same ID uh, that's the idea of universally unique or globally unique ID. Good news is that every programming language, because this is such a you know common use case, they all come with built-in ID generators. And so there's they're all the same algorithms because you need something that can truly generate unique IDs. And it has to be based on some entropy, right? So if you have the same algorithm on every computer in the world, and that algorithm is just trying to generate a random number, you're gonna very likely run into collisions very quickly. So you need entropy, you need to add entropy into the system. 
And so there's multiple versions of UUID generators, version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and onward. Version 4 is pretty standard these days because what it does is it adds a lot of entropy based on your local system, like network information, time of day. Maybe it will even grab other information from the entropy collector on your operating system. So UUID version 4, that's the one that you typically will be using because you can use it, generate an ID, and then on different servers around the world, they'll all have different IP addresses. I have different network configurations. That level entropy seems generally okay in generating uh, random IDs. What if you want to generate an ID though that is specific to the device and it's very consistent? Something that you could do is hash like the MAC address of your device or some other static information about the device that will identify the device. Something like a SHA-256 would be good in this case. So you can hash using a cryptographically secure, non-reversible, right? Non-reversible uh, hashing on something that is known about the device. This is good to generate sort of a unique identifier that's always associated with the device or the user. Yeah, that, that's a good way. Email address also works pretty well. So you could also just generate a list of IDs using like an online generator tool like this system here. Although I don't recommend doing this because every language has one for free. So I can generate like say two UUIDs here and this will generate two UUIDs that I could grab, copy, and then use in my app if I wanted to for testing purposes because this will generate some static user IDs that I could use. So maybe you'd want maybe to test a hundred users, right? So you generate a hundred and then you can reuse this list, which would be really good for testing purposes because you kind of want like a static list under a testing environment. And then that way you can make sure that you're testing a system where you're going to have users that come back with the same ID, which is real world, right? You want to test you know, realistic situations. You could also easily generate uh, using a quick Python script, a bunch of UUIDs just by, by doing this, right? So you can import UUID, you wanna use UUID version four, and then for the number of unique identifiers, you could specify right here in the range statement and then you just run this run this code it looks like this import uuid then you import json and then here's what one uuid looks like right so that's just one and then you can of course print out like 10 there you go and so what you would do is you'd save this list probably like as a user id.json file and then you can import that list as needed so that way you can always leverage off of the same list here when you're building a test application. 